For the following exercises, given each set of information, find a linear equation satisfying the conditions if possible. All right, so they give us some information about uh, this particular uh, function. They say that the x-intercept is negative 2, 0, and the y-intercept is 0, 3. So first, let's just gain a little visual intuition here. So let's uh, draw a little set of axes, and let's plot the point negative 2, 0. So we start at the origin. First, we do the x, so we go out to negative 2, and then we don't go anywhere on the y because the y value is 0. Then let's plug in the y-intercept. So it says that x is 0, so you don't move from the origin, and now negative 3, so you're going to go down 3 units, right? So maybe I'll plot the point right here. And now, this would be a linear line. Let me just make that a little neater. Thank God for autocorrect, right? Um, so let's just plot this now, nice linear line. So basically, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to find the equation of this linear line. All right? Now... What does it mean to find the equation of that linear line? Well, you know the general equation is going to be for a linear line is y is equal to mx plus b, right? To find then the equation for this particular line really means to find the slope value, or in other words, the slope value must be known, and the y-intercept must also be known, okay? Basically, it's something you would think about, you know, what could you plug into your calculator? You can't plug this in. It's going to say, what the heck you given to me? I don't know what to do, right? But you can plug this into your calculator, 3x plus 5 maybe, right? And that would give you a, a, a graph, right? A linear line. So that's what we're looking for. So essentially, I got to find the slope and I have to find the y-intercept. Several ways to go about this. Why don't I first look at the y-intercept though? Now to find the y-intercept is basically, that's basically the point at which the graph or the line intersects the y-axis. So remember the vertical axis is y, the horizontal is x. So basically, I'm looking for where this red line over here crosses that y-axis. And I notice it happens right here. Okay? So what is the value of y when it crosses the y-axis? Well, we said it was negative 3, right? I mean, it was given to us. Okay? So I actually know what b is. So b is going to be equal to negative 3. All right, that was nice. They gave it to us in such a way that we can deduce that without having to do too much uh, complex math, right? So I know what B is. Now, the second part to find M, and you could have found M first, by the way, it doesn't really matter. But the way now, if I, if I, if I found B first, I can now solve for M in two ways. All right, I'm going to show you both ways uh, to do it, and you'll see that they are the same. Uh, now, whenever we need to find slope, if I know two points, okay, this you have to memorize. If you know two points, you can always find the slope assuming it's a linear line. And we can use then the slope formula down here on the bottom right. It says that the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's write that down. So we have the slope being equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. All right. Now, it does not matter to me whatsoever, nor should it matter to the actual answer, which one you define as your first point and your second point. Absolutely no, it doesn't matter. So let's just define this since it came first. I'll define that one as my first one and this one as my second point. So you know coordinates are labeled x, y. And since I call this my first point, I'm going to put a little 1 down there, x1, y1. Similarly, I'm going to also define this now as x2, y2. Now literally all we have to do is once we define that, we just have to plug them on in to the formula appropriately. So now y2 is what value? Well, I defined it to be negative 3, so plug that in. Minus then, what's y1? Well, I define that to be 0, so you plug that in. What did I define x2 to be? Well, I said x2 is going to be 0. And then minus, now what did I define x1 to be? Well, that's a negative 2, so you have to be careful with the double negative here. So now the slope here will equal, the numerator just simply works out to be negative 3. And then when you take care of the denominator, negative times a negative is obviously a positive, so it's just a positive 2. And now this is the slope, okay? So notice now, we know the b, we know the m, so we have our equation, right? Now we just plug them in. So the equation for that linear line will be y is equal to negative 3 over 2 times x plus then a negative 3, right? And instead of writing plus negative 3, you can simply rewrite this as just negative 3. And that would be then the value of the equation, all right? Let me show you the second way that you could have approached this. So now, let's take a look at the general formula for the linear equation. y is equal to 
mx plus b. Now, if I know b, and if I know a y, and if I know an x, then I can solve for m, right? Anytime you have an equation and you know all of the things except for one of them, you can just do some algebra to figure it out. Now, basically, the y and x, okay, or the x and y, however you want to look at it, uh, are or would be any point you like on this line, any point you want. Now, it so happens to be that we know two of them, right? We know this point and we know this point, okay? Now, basically, you can plug in any point you like into this equation. However, there's going to be one of these two that are preferred. Which one do you think that is? Now, technically, we can plug in both. However, however, if we want to solve for the slope, only one of these will do. What do you think? It's actually going to be this one. And why is that the case? Right? W-H-Y, not the letter Y, but why is that the case? Well, that's the the case. The reason why is because I don't know what I'm trying to say. That's why I started stuttering. But the the reason why is because x in this point is zero. So imagine you plug in x here. Excuse me. Imagine you plug in zero here for x. What happens when you take m and multiply it by zero? It just cancels. So you literally got rid of what you wanted to solve for. That's not going to work. So we're going to use that point. Okay. So what's the y value of that point? It's 0, so you plug it in. The m is unknown. Let's solve for the x, so that's negative 2. Okay, and then minus then the 3, because it's, right, that's the y-intercept. So now this is 0 is equal to negative 2 m minus 3. Add the 2m on over to the left-hand side. I'm not going to do it fully because I'm running out of space, but it's going to be 2m is equal to negative 3. And then all you have to simply do is divide out the 2, right, from both sides. So m is going to be equal to negative 3 over 2 and omg genus what? They are the same. All right. So we would have arrived at the exact same answer. So either way you do it is totally fine. Uh, you know, one way you might prefer over the other. So let's take a look at the second example. Why don't you try this one on your own? Pause the video, challenge yourself, get an answer, and check it with mine. All right. Just because you're wrong might not mean I'm right, right? It could mean that I'm wrong and you're right, but I'm going to make sure I do this correctly. All right. So uh, here we go. That the They told us the x-intercept is going to be negative 5 and the y-intercept is 0, 4. So I already know right off the bat what the y-intercept will be. The y-intercept will be 4. So I know now that b will be equal to 4. All right, great. The way I'm going to choose to do this is I'm going to choose to use my y is equal to mx plus b formula to help me find the slope. Remember, you, we cannot plug in the y-intercept because the y-intercept has an x value of 0, and that would just cancel that whole thing. So I'm going to plug in then the x-intercept value. So we plug in then 0 for y, m times then a negative 5, plus then the slope value of 4. This works out to be then negative 5, m plus 4. Add the 5 and on m on over to the left, right? So that's going to be 5m is equal to 4. Divide out the 5 from both sides, all right? And then what do we get? We get m is equal to 4 over 5. So the equation here of this line is going to be y is equal to 4 fifths x plus 4. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, all right? And you can check it, too, if you want to make sure, right? Check it via using the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is your 2, this is your 1. So it's basically going to be 4 minus 0, all divided by 0 minus a negative 5. And what does this work out to be? This works out to be 4 fifths. So we just double-checked, okay? So we are good. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for viewing the videos. And we look forward to helping with more problems. Take care.